Hello, welcome to episode 81. We are here with Melinda Jackson from Melinda Jackson PR. We are talking about how to position yourself as a rock star. Welcome to the PR Playbook Podcast, the only podcast giving you actionable skills and advice you need to execute a strategic PR program. Warning. What you hear next may lead to brand awareness and increased sales and customer exposure. Now here's your host, Rinjini Joshua. Hi, Melinda. How are you doing today? Hi, I'm doing well. Thank you for having me. Yes, thanks for joining us on the PR Playbook podcast and Uh, One of the things that I'm very excited to talk about with you is your entertainment publicity background, of course, um, which is a little bit different from what I think is public relations in a different sense. Uh, We'll talk about the nuances of that, but also just like, you know, how to position yourself in a rock star, especially now that everything's so crowded and noisy. Um, Thought leadership is is a thing on everybody's mind. So um, before we get started, can you just give us a little bit of background on yourself, um, your professional history and how you got to where you are today? Yeah, so I I feel like I always have the same little spiel that I do, but um, I was born and raised in very rural, small town, North Carolina, and I'm actually based in Raleigh right now. Um, But yeah, grew up uh, in North Carolina, went to college in the same county that I grew up in, and went like went to kindergarten with people I graduated college with you know never never really moved away and so as you can imagine I was like I got to get out of here ASAP so the second I graduated um I moved to Los Angeles um and started working in PR and I was a communication major I'd had like one or two PR classes but I wasn't really well versed in what it was but uh funny enough I'm a year younger than all the girls from like the Hills. And so the Hills had just came out that show and they worked in PR and I was like, well, that looks cool. And they live in California and I want to live in California. Like that's what I should do. And like, you know, I I was always really big into the music scene here in North Carolina. And I didn't realize it at the time, but I'd always kind of done PR for my friends' bands and helped them promote their shows and and get booked on shows and things like that. So I think it's always kind of been in my blood, but Mm -hmm. anyway, moved to LA. Um, at the height of the recession, had to hustle really hard. I had no friends there, no contacts, no job offers. So I just did a ton of part-time jobs um, and did three internships at once to try to gain experience to get into the field and get a full-time job. And it was especially hard because, you know, I'm this girl from small town, North Carolina from a college no one's ever heard of. And I'm competing for jobs against girls who went to USC and their dads are executives at Universal. And so, you know, I had to really, really bust my butt, but um, I hustled a lot. I learned a lot and um, I ended up getting a full-time job and I, I stayed in LA for seven years and, you know, worked in my dream firm, worked at small firms, worked with people freelance and just really got to do just everything you would imagine that, uh, that anybody working in entertainment PR would do, especially with all the red carpets and, you know, photobombing celebrities at the Grammys and my friends would send me screenshots of me and all that stuff. But it was really awesome. And it was a really great learning experience. But right before I, before I turned 30, I was like, I can't do this anymore. I got to move back to North Carolina. My second nephew had just been born and I didn't want to miss out anymore. And so I moved to North Carolina, um, back to Raleigh and worked at an advertising agency as a PR and social media director for two years. And then just really realized like, I can do so much more for my clients if it's just me one-on-one and I don't have all the red tape of an agency, Mm -hmm. Um, especially an agency that maybe doesn't necessarily specialize in PR. Right. So I went out on my own and uh, yeah, I've been, I've had my company for almost three years now and it's just, it's been amazing. And I just love helping people grow their businesses. Yeah. Okay. So I think you said the perfect thing for us to touch on this topic, which you mentioned the Hills and how they worked in PR. And I feel like that's what a lot of people's perception of PR people are is the Hills and P- the publicity girls yeah. that, that did it. And it's, that's, I think that is my biggest kind of gripe about publicity versus PR. Well, and of, of course, you know, Hollywood glamour, yeah. glamorizing PR. And they do that a lot because 
uh, Samantha Jones from Sex and the yeah, City. Yeah, I was going to say um, Entourage. Like everyone yeah. al- always is like, is that what you do? And I'm like, kind of. Yeah, it's like you don't want to say no because it is PR, but it's really not the normal yeah. part of PR where yeah. we're behind a desk uh, writing stories, thinking of ideas, coming up with strategies. So what is, what do you think, like, you know, based on what you're doing now with your clients and what you really did more red carpet entertainment, and maybe even a little comparison with the Hills, what do you think are the biggest differences between like publicity and like doing PR for like a brand or a person? Yeah. So, um, I, I think when it comes to the terms, it's all kind of just semantics to me. I don't see a huge difference in the terms, but yeah. in in terms of what I'm a- what actually physically doing every day, you know, when I was in LA and I had celebrities or musicians that I was working with, um, one of the big things was really just trying to get them seen. Um, so yes, you'd have the interviews and all that stuff, but physically seen. So right. is there an event that they can go to? Is there something that like an uh, event that they can host, that they can cross promote with another brand, something like that? And so they, they become the brand at that point. They're yes. the product. Yes, exactly. The per- literally, say, literally yeah. the person is the product. And so like, you know, looking at the Hollywood events calendars and saying like, okay, can I submit my person to this? Is this a good fit? You know, um, as one of their co-stars posting an event that we can try to get them into, things like that. But, you know, working with people that aren't celebrities uh, or brands, it's, you have to create the event. You have to yeah. create the opportunity it's not the same thing. It's not as easy as, oh yeah, they, they're just going to go walk the red carpet at this premiere tonight. That's a check mark. You know, um, it's, you have to really create the experiences and, um, and the stories more so. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's such a, (laughs) so interesting. Like, I just, like, I think it just clicked for me when I said the person is the product. Yeah, that's true. That's so crazy to even think of, but yeah, I'm sure it's been a really cool journey. I mean, I, I, I find that, publicity when people people come to us uh, we're we're focusing consumer tech lifestyle and um, products based and enterprise so when people come to us and they're individuals and they're like hey can you do PR for me I like I say no immediately because um, it's just a different you know it's a different animal and and actually I guess the same principles it's just a different style of work yeah. it seems like if I wanted to be in that like category of PR, then you really have to be in that category of mm-hmm. PR and know what's going around when it comes to like positioning people and things like that. But as far as thought leadership and what we're talking about today, how to position yourself like a rock star, I mean, those principles can carry over. I'd love to talk to you a little bit about like what successes that you've had of positioning people in, in unique ways, especially since thought leadership has become such a big thing. Yeah. So having the entertainment background, I, I go into each of my clients with a thought leadership like perspective. So uh, I always, my whole thing is, okay, let's figure out how we can put a name to the brand. Let's figure out what person the consumer can connect with. And so no matter what, even if it's a, a food company or something like that, I don't know, random, I've never even had a food company. I don't know why I said that, but you know, <laughs> like, let's just say it's a, a physical product. I'm always like, okay, well, who's the founder or who's the, who's a person at the company that we can, that that can be the face of it for, for right now. Because I personally always connect with brands that I know the backstory with, or I know the person behind it um, and can put a face to a name with that. I think, I think it's like kind of moving towards that anyway. Like a lot of people are becoming more conscious of the choices they're making. So they want to know like, are the people in the company legit? (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. No, you're totally true. You're totally right. Um, but yeah, so I just kind of go automatically go into everything with like, okay, how, how can we make this person a thought leader and, and not do the obvious thing. And, and that's like something I always harp on is I never want to be the publicist that just does the, um, the token press release and hope it works. You know, I don't want to do that. I'm like, let's figure out unique things. Um, and one story I always like to share is we had a jazz musician when I was in LA who we just weren't getting a lot of press for. And and so we had a a deep dive conversation. We're like, okay, what do you like to do? What's some unique things? You're a dad, you're, you're this, you're that. And then he told us that when he's on tour, he goes on long distance cycle rides on like a fancy cycle bike. And so (laughs) we uh, started pitching him to cycling magazines and we're able to get a few mentions from that. 
And, you know, that not only was a unique angle, but it also exposed him to an even bigger audience. And so that's something I always try to do with my clients. I'm like, let's have these personal conversations. Let's, let's Mm -hmm. think about things. You know, I have a, a client who is a female entrepreneur. She owns some restaurants and a brewery. She's a master sommelier. Uh, She's an author, but she's also an education activist in Eastern North Carolina. So it's like, we have so many angles that we can go with, you know, and I wouldn't know that had I not sat down and said, okay, you know, let's, let's just deep dive into this. Let's have just like a normal conversation and let's figure out what we can do. How, you know, you're talking about these deep dive conversations and like in my mind, you know, as a person who hustles and like works with a lot of startups and everybody is like, you know, racing against time. Mm -hmm. I just want to do this with another PR person so that everybody knows it's not just me, but it does take time to do a lot of these things. What is like the average amount of time it takes to kind of like get a really good pitch, like moving when it comes to doing personal thought leadership? Um, so it's something that I, whenever I even have the initial, like, let's come up with a PR plan, like we're going to work together. Let's come up with a PR plan. That conversation. I'm like, okay, you know, here's the brand, here's the company, but what's give me two to three other things that you, that we could talk about from a personal level. Like just give me a few that we can run with. And from that, we'll kind of pick what we think is going to work. And then I always kind of set it up in my PR plans of like, okay, what's timely? Like what's, you know, do we have something we have to release right now this month? Okay. So we're going to do that first. But then after that, let's go into the unique thought leadership, thought leadership aspect and let's figure that out. And sometimes people pick it up right away and sometimes they don't, but I always like to keep it as an underlying thing that we can always touch back to and always kind of rework a little bit and pivot and say, okay, you know, you're a mom, but you're an entrepreneur. So Let's try the mom stuff first. We're Mm -hmm. not getting traction for the mom stuff. Let's go to the entrepreneur stuff. If that's not working, what's another niche, you know, and keep kind of building on it and, and pivoting as, and seeing what works. But I mean, obviously, you know, there's no timeline. I've seen stuff (laughs) like get booked that day. And then something I always say, like I had a client who I'd pitched and pitched and pitched and didn't get a response until six months later, somebody responded to that email and they were like, Hey, sorry, it's taken so long. We flagged yeah. this, but we yeah. want him to be on the cover, you know? And so it was a huge win, but it was something that I was like, this lady is never getting back to me. You know, I'm yeah. just going to give up. Yeah. So it just, it yeah, takes I mean, time. It's, it's, a, it's a frustrating thing. And it's like, I've been, you know, encouraging people to think of PR as a long-term thing, yeah. obviously. And in this podcast, we try to help people, you know, the goal is to really just help people come up with their plan and understand that this is a marathon and not mm-hmm. a sprint Yep. and, and not to say, and I feel like when you use cliches like that, people are like, oh, well, they just want us to keep paying them. But the truth is it really does like, we'll do other things in the yeah. meantime, but you know, let's say you want to get on the cover of my, like my big thing is wired. I love wired. Yeah. So if you want to get on the cover of Wired, it might take us a year. We can yeah. do other stuff in between that. We don't have to just like, we're not going to sit here and wait, exactly. but it takes time to build a story. And I've heard there's this one client that we had, they wanted to be like in the Wall Street Journal the next day. And I said, well, mm-hmm. you don't have the ammunition for that yet. You know, yeah. and like, you don't have a huge round of funding that I can announce. You have no placements anywhere else. Yep. <laughs> So you haven't built anything. You don't have a blog. Like, I don't know how you expect to be in the Wall Street Journal the very yeah. next day, like coming out of nowhere. And I think, I think setting those expectations is really difficult because everyone thinks PR is like some kind of magic bullet, you know? Oh, for sure. And, and one example I always use to my clients, I'm like, it has to be a snowball. We have to snowball this because if I reach out to the Wall Street Journal today and they Google you and there's not shit on the there's internet nothing. about you, yeah. nobody, they're not going to write about you. They don't care. But if they see that you've gotten some buzz, even if it's small yeah. and they're like, oh, okay. Some rural, some like, you know, yeah, this whatever. Person has a, this person has like a, a stake in the game. Exactly. Then they'll yeah. say, oh, well, well, people are talking about it. I should talk about it too. You know, and that's not always the case, but nine times out of 10 it is. So yes, like you have to snowball it. You have to grow it like that. And it's frustrating. I get that. I mean, it's frustrating for us 
reaching out to people and being told no every day. You know, that's what I tell I think, my- I think people don't know how much rejection we take. I know. I tell my friends, like, um, I was talking to one of my friends and he was like, wait, so literally you just email people and you have to sit and wait for them to get back to you. And then sometimes you wait forever and they tell you no. I'm like, yep. <laughs> That's exactly what I do. (laughs) I mean, and nowadays, yeah, we're mostly relying on email. But I remember when I used to get yelled at on the phone. Oh my God. And they'd say, don't call here or or like, yeah, I don't, this is the wrong, this is not, no. First of all, no. Slam the the phone down or I don't have time for this. I'm on deadline Yep. or every once in a while you'll get, oh, you know what? I'm on deadline. Can you call me back tomorrow between Uh like, yeah. And then that would be a win for me. That's oh, a win. Um, my favorite is when you call them and they're like, uh, can you email it to me? And it's like, I've emailed it to you three times already. Google my or check, search my name. Yeah. Like yeah. find it. It's in there. I promise you it, it's in there. And they're like, well, can you send it to me and the assignment desk girl? I already have. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, yeah, I, I, that was a labor of love going through the fire of like yep. learning PR and like, it's so funny because like now, if you're, if you're entering PR, the industry now, you don't have to do those things. No, no. So different. I know it's like, God, I mean, I hate talking on the phone anyway, but when my bosses would be like, get on the phones, get on the phones. I would just sit there and like hold my line up so they could see that something was on. And then I would hang it up and hold the line and yeah. like not call. Cause I'm like, I'm not going to call these people. I'm not going to do it. Oh, I, I would, yeah. I, used to I would like, rather DM pushing. them on Twitter yeah. Then, then call them. Absolutely. I mean, there's a few people that I know that, okay, if I have their phone number, I could probably call them now. It's so different, right? Oh yeah. So first, first it's email only. Then yep. there's the pandemic that uh-huh. just screwed everything up. Um, so now you don't know always like, you whether- don't know who, you don't know who is working for who, you where don't know they are, <laughs> where they are ever. Um, also vacation messages. Is everyone on vacation all <laughs> of the past year? I'm very confused because I've been working, girl. I don't know. <laughs> oh my God, that is so funny. Yeah, I've, yes, I've gotten a lot of, and maybe they're taking a lot of mental health breaks. Hey, I'm do not, it. Do I'm it. not sure. I have been too, but I've been working. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, no, this is funny and awesome. But uh, going back to positioning as a rock. Sorry, star, everyone. No, no. <laughs> just lost all your followers. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think, I think, again, this just, this just kind of confirms the fact that it's really difficult to get into the press. Oh yeah. You have to have a good story. Tell us a little bit more, you know, like I, I like to kind of lead off with the tips and make sure that everybody has some actionable things to do when they are done listening and they push, push pause on their phones or, or wherever they're listening. So do you have some like, you know, mainline tips for people who want to either position themselves or their CEO or a client as a thought leader? And like, what kind of different things, creative things can they be doing to do that? Yeah. So um, the three things I always tell people is first to deep dive into your niche. So that's kind of what I talked about before. Just get creative with it, figure it out. What, like, yes, there, you probably have competitors that are doing something similar, but figure out what they're not doing and, and something that's unique to you. So really deep dive, like I said, the jazz musician who goes on long distance cycle rides, like things like that. Um, the, the female entrepreneur, who's also an education activist, you know, some of my clients have IVF, uh, have, have had IVF journeys. So deep dive into things like that, you know, figure out different unique ways. And then once you figure that out, you know, find the publications that go along with that. And it's not always going to be the most obvious things. You got to research a little bit, but you know, you can really find some really great publications out there. If you just search a little bit, you know, if it's parenting, you know, yeah, sure. Parenting magazine, parents magazine, but look for some parenting podcasts, you know, look for some top like online parenting blogs, things like that. So just really take some time and do your research and find those unique publications that go along with the niche that can really help you tell your story. And then the third thing I always say is find ways to create buzz. So obviously, you know, you're going to be reaching out to the publications, but is there a brand that you can partner with? Another brand that you can partner with? Is there an event that you can hold? You know, I've seen happy hours work really well, you know, partnering with a brand with a bar and then inviting a ton of 
influencers or, you know, local tastemakers, things like that. Be creative with it, figure out, figure out ways that work, you know, especially if it's a thought leader, you know, is there, is there a happy hour that you can have and you can host a panel or you can organize a panel. So you're on it and you're talking about, you know, your area of expertise with also other industry thought leaders or just thought leaders across different industries that can, again, help you grow your audience in a good cross promotion way. That just made me think of an amazing example. And I, I just love this lady and she's on LinkedIn and not anywhere in, in my industry, but her name is JT O'Donnell. And during the pandemic, she's, I, I don't want to, uh, she's a little bit older. So like yeah. a little bit older than myself, I believe. Um, I don't know how old she is, so I don't want to age her. Yeah. <laughs> like, so she's a little bit older than myself, but I say that to say she started a TikTok channel and she started doing these like HR focused posts on TikTok about how to get a job, how to retain a job, anything around HR. And she killed it. And it was all during the pandemic. And she used that LinkedIn as this platform to try something new. And then I, I believe it's called work it daily now. Mm -hmm. So like she actually created a brand from this. I, I think in my mind, cause I watched it unfold. Um, and I don't know how I got connected with her in the beginning, but like, I think it became a brand yeah. after she made, made some success out of it. I think it was an experiment for her yeah. and it was so cute. And she would like do these like quick videos on um, TikTok, but it's all about HR and you know, all those like HR, yeah. all, all those videos where they're like pointing to words. Exactly. But she uh, really became a thought leader in the HR space. Um, she used LinkedIn as a platform. She used TikTok as a platform to reach like job seekers, mm -hmm. which was a big deal during the pandemic. And I think if anybody wants to look her up at her name, JT O'Donnell or look up work it daily. And, you know, I don't work with that industry, but yeah. she did such a good job in really not only establishing a new brand, but yep. establishing herself as someone like mm -hmm. who's willing to try new things, be yeah. creative. And then she was also on the board of, I think it's make a wish foundation. Uh -huh. So then she also used that as another thing yeah. like, Hey, I'm, you know, I'm in make a wish foundation. And she, she got more followers and people to, so it, it just drew a lot of attention to her and she did such a good job. And the, the, the tips that you're talking about here really remind me of that. Yeah, no, literally that's all the points. She, she has her niche, which is HR. She figured out, okay, what specific things in HR that I can talk about? She, she found her yeah. unique niche within her, you know, niche. And yeah. then she figured out ways to, to get it out, the message out there big, big, on big, those big. platforms. Yeah. And then it created something new. So that's like a perfect example. It's, it, yeah. you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Just look at what other people are doing and figure out what you can do. That's a little bit different. And, and, you know, sometimes it's as easy. And I tell people this all the time. I'm like, sometimes it's as easy as just reaching out to your local newspaper and say, Hey, this is my company. This is what I do. This is what I can talk about. Yeah. Do you want to do a story? Like it doesn't, you know, especially if you don't have money for PR, like, you know, that's something very simple that you can do that can really get the ball rolling. Yeah, no, I, I love it. Um, this is a great conversation. I can talk to you forever um, about <laughs> all kinds of PR things. Um, but thank you so much. Um, can, where can people find you? Obviously we'll have all your information in the show yeah. notes, but where can people find you? Um, it's very easy. It's just melindajacksonpr.com. I'm on social media at Melinda Jackson PR. And yeah, you can email me Melinda at Melinda Jackson PR. It's all my name. It's very easy. <laughs> yeah, you you've been blessed with an easy name. I get oh, yeah. all kinds of crazy spellings of my name. <laughs> oh yeah. No, I get it. Well, no one, I get a lot of people email me and say, Hey Melissa. I'm like, you literally typed in my email address that has my name <laughs> twice. <laughs> but sure. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, um, it's been great talking to you. Thank you so much. And see you guys later. Thanks. Bye.